Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of 1 Corinthians. We're still looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Now you recall from the last couple of sessions that in the first few chapters of Corinthians, Paul is dealing with the issue of division. There have been some quarrels and some division in the church at Corinth, and Paul wants to deal with this. And he reminds them that their unity is found in Jesus. They are all committed to Jesus Christ. No matter which teacher they might personally prefer, whether it be Paul or Apollos or Peter, that doesn't matter. They're all committed to Jesus, and it's Christ that provides their unity. So keep holding to Jesus. And that's his main topic in the first few chapters, but also in the midst of this discussion, he gets into some other things that are very, very interesting for us. For example, in chapter 1, he mentions to them that he is glad he did not baptize many of them. He had baptized a few folks, but not many. Now, why would he be glad of that? Because he was afraid that if he had baptized a whole lot of them, they would use their baptism by Paul as a means of dividing from others who were baptized by someone else. And so he says, the primary reason I came to you was not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And he gives us some important instructions about the gospel. So we're in verse 17 of chapter 1. And Paul says, For Christ did not send me to baptize. That was not my primary thing in coming. Now, baptism is important. It, it marks us as belonging to Jesus. But that's not the most important thing Paul says. Christ did not send me to you to baptize, but to preach the gospel, to preach the good news, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So Paul says, my primary thing is to preach the good news in Jesus. And I'm not worried about being eloquent in the ways of men or being a great speaker as men judge it to be so. I just want to preach in the power of God. And what is the power of God in the gospel? Paul says in verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now Paul says the message of the gospel is all about the cross. That Jesus died on the cross for us. And there is our liberation. There is our deliverance in what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. And then of course after the cross he was buried. But on the third day rose in power and opened the way to eternal life for us all. Now that's the gospel I preach, Paul says. Now, to the world, this sounds foolish. How can someone save you by dying on the cross for you? How is that even possible? The world says that's foolishness. Paul says, my message may seem to be foolish to the world, but actually it is the power of God. And the reason I came to you and what I'm all about is preaching the good news in Jesus that he died for us, that our sins might be forgiven, and that he rose for us to open the way to eternal life. Paul goes on to say in verse 22, Now Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom, but we, that is we followers of Jesus, we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Paul wants us to understand that the heart of of the message in Jesus, sinners on the cross, that Jesus came to die for us, that he came to take our sins upon himself and take them to the cross, there to make atonement for us. The world may think that's foolish, but this is the power of God. And all I want to do among you, Paul says, is preach Christ crucified. He died for us that we might be forgiven. And he rose for us, that we might live forever with him. I'm not an eloquent preacher, says Paul. I don't use human wisdom. Those things don't interest me. All I'm interested in is Jesus Christ. He who died for us and who rose for us and opens the way to eternal life for us. I just want to preach Christ to you. Now, if we, do, if we remember that, we'll always be united. If we remember that it's all about Jesus, what he did for us, then there'll be no division among us. There'll be no quarreling. We'll be one together because we're absolutely committed to Jesus 
who died for us and who rose for us. The world may say that's foolish. That's okay. We know that in Christ we find the power of God. That's the power of the gospel. Jesus for us. Amen and amen. Hope you join us tomorrow as we continue our study of 1 